Good morning. So today I'm going to be talking about my practice over the last year with uh, this little thing called loss. Um, For some of you, you might know that uh, amidst the pandemic, I have been um, going through some some transitions. And um, some of those, I don't know that I've shared with the group. I uh, have had family members who have moved from St. Louis. Uh, my, My parents who were about a mile from me um, before the pandemic have moved uh, to the Lake of the Ozarks. And my sister, uh, who was in St. Charles, she was a little ways away, but she also moved to to, uh, the Lake of the Ozarks. And my brother and sister-in-law and niece are in an RV and unsure of where they will be, but it will not be in St. Louis. <laughs> and uh, they sold their restaurant and are traveling the United States right now. Um, so that is one loss. And then um, I have been preparing uh, for travel and uh, it will possibly be a uh, international travel where I'll need to be pretty light with my possessions. So um, over the last six months, I've actually um, let go of about 80% of my personal possessions, um, including my house, uh, which I sold a couple of months ago. Um, But what's been front and center here recently has been Um, a part of my ego identity that was uh, my professional career. So there was a uh, kind of self-identity of media entrepreneur. And this particular uh, loss or letting go um, has given me um, a lot of opportunities of practice. And so that's what I'd like to share with you today and and talk to you about um, what I've been sitting with for a little while and then uh, what has been kind of the recent uh, discoveries in this. So as I turn to my teachers in in Buddhism and the stories that um, have been a useful tool for me to be able to um, both sit in the experience of it as well as process it, um, one of the stories that came, um, has came up for me is one you might be familiar with, and this is of Um, the Tibetan meditation master and teacher, Marpa. And through a series of events, he lost his son. And as the story goes, um, upon learning of the loss of his son, um, he began weeping uh, in front of his students. And one of his disciples said, Master, why are you weeping? You teach us that death is an illusion. And Marpa uh, replied, "Um, yes, death is an illusion. And the death of a child is an even greater illusion. Um, And for me, what... The opportunity here was um, of reading this story 
and, and sitting in that is to recognize that I can um, look to a teacher who has understands the truth about the nature of everything and the emptiness of forms, um, but who is also um, able and willing to also be a human being. And he could feel what he was feeling. He could completely open himself up to that grief. Um, and he could do it not only with himself, but in front of others. And so I, I looked then to some teachers who might be able to give me some um, some structure that would be useful in the sitting of the feelings that um, have risen up in, in loss. And so um, anyone who has been with me for a while um, in this Sangha knows that um, I, I follow Pema and, and look to her often. And um, in a recent interview, she, she actually led a, um, a practice and um, it was a practice for the current moment of being able to sit in the emotions and um, the groundlessness of the pandemic. And so I, I thought that, that we could do that now, um, that as a part of my talk, I'd like to, to insert a little practice here. Um, so if you are able and willing to do that with me, um, I'm gonna just take us through Another practice, I know we've already had a sit today. Um, this won't be too long, but just instead of talking you through um, this practice, I thought we might experience the practice. So um, if you're willing, um, you might close your eyes again or look directly in front of you, but turning your attention from outward to inward And taking a moment to find an example of one experience of loss that you've had, and we're gonna narrow that to the last year, a loss that you've had over the last year. And just take a moment here to bring your attention to that loss. And as the mind brings up the loss, see if you can identify the feelings associated with the loss. And taking a moment here to scan the body to see as your mind settles on that loss and identifies those feelings, if it's possible to locate where in the body you're feeling that emotion. Taking a deep breath here, 
allowing the heart to get bigger and bigger and bigger. As big as it needs to be. Breathe into the whole space around you. Give it space and warmth. And then breathe it out. See if it's possible to make contact with the place in which the emotion resides. Maybe place your hand on the body, wherever that feeling is. Breathe in. Breathe out with a sigh. creating a lot of space. Now see if it's possible to see the face of someone who makes you feel better. Breathe in. Open, open, breathe out. Breathe in. Millions of people are feeling this right now. This very feeling, millions and millions of people are feeling. Breathe out. May they also be able to open their hearts and embrace this. May they also be relieved from suffering. Feeling the ground beneath you, your body in this space, in this moment. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes if they're closed and release this practice. Another story that is available in Buddhism is one that you may be familiar with. Um, I believe, Will, you've told this story at least once, which is the story of the mustard seed. 
where a wealthy woman lost her son and an old man recommended that she go to the Buddha. So the woman took her child to the Buddha and asked for Buddha to help her bring her child back to life. And the Buddha told her he would bring her child back to life. But first, in order to do this, she needed to go to all of the families in the village and collect mustard seeds from any family who had not experienced a loved one dying. So the woman, filled with hope, went around to each family in the village and one by one, they told her of their own loss. Until finally she was at the last home and heard of that family's loss and then realized that there was no family in the village who had not lost a loved one. And with that, she did not return back to the Buddha immediately, but instead went to the woods and buried her son. And in this story, what I, what I got from it was that there was an acceptance. There was an acceptance that she had to go through in order to mourn her son. And for me, that is a, a part of loss that um, I'm still learning and um, has been a part of, of this journey of inquiry. So over the last, uh, over the last few weeks, um, I've been sitting with this idea around the loss of my, of my media entrepreneur identity. And I thought I had a lot of clarity around it. Uh, when people asked me about it, there were sort of two emotions that were very clear. One was a feeling of relief. And the other was a feeling of fear. What am I going to do next? Who am I? If not that, then what am I? But it wasn't until uh, this week that I discovered a new part of uh, the emotional experience related to this loss that I hadn't fully accepted yet. So I am on a nonprofit board and I uh, have been working on a project and the project culminated this week. And um, as it sometimes happens with these kinds of projects for me, I was sort of in that post-mortem moment where I was you know, telling everyone, thank you. And, and I sent a note to the board president just thanking him and um, expressing my gratitude for the opportunity. And, and instead of replying back, he called me. Um, and, and said, you know, said, I, I wanted to tell you, uh, something, but I didn't want to put it in email because I thought it might get lost in translation. So I thought I'd call you. And what he said was, um, I just want to tell you 
that when 10 years ago, you came on the philanthropic scene, I heard of you and I heard of what you were doing in fashion and what you were doing in media and what you were doing with the magazine. And I was intimidated. And I really wanted to be friends with you when you joined the board, but I knew of you as this person and I was too scared to talk to you. And so it wasn't until the board retreat that we were in a small group together that I got the courage to talk to you. And, and I, I just wanted to tell you that I'm so grateful I got to work on this project with you, but I also wanted to let you know, this is sort of what I, this has been my experience of you. And it was so weird to hear myself described like that. Um, and what came out of my mouth was, well, I am humbled by that. Now, what a weird thing to say was somebody who just said something that was not humbling <laughs> at all. Um, so anyway, I got off the phone and I, I kept replaying in my mind, why didn't I say I'm flattered? I mean, here's a man who, he's the board president, but he's also, you know, vice president, a big financial company. I just think the world of him, the thought that he was thought of me in this way, it, why didn't I say flattered, humbled? And what I realized is that I had a little, a little jangle that I needed to explore, that there was something that I was not being honest about. And I'm so grateful for these practices because I had already done some of the inquiring and sitting in um, the other emotions. And so I went into my meditation and I did some yoga and I did some dance and I allowed my, myself to just be in this, what is this? <laughs> There's something that needs some attention here. And all of a sudden I was flooded by sadness and I started weeping, I mean, crying. And what I was crying for was the loss of power and influence. And I feel ashamed about that. <laughs> so I wasn't allowing myself to fully experience it. And in fact, when someone said something about it, I kind of dismissed it and went right back to humility, humility, that's where I want to be. But here I was in the sadness of something that in my very human experience was real. Yes, it is an illusion, but still an illusion in which I want to honor and show up to and be honest about, as well as give myself the space to fully process. So some of my tools um, beyond what I've talked about is um, acceptance, yes, feeling it, yes, but also bringing a certain amount of curiosity to it. And for me, um, what happens when I experience loss is that um, my mind begins to ask questions. And for me, those questions um, range, but sometimes it is, why is this happening to me? Sometimes it is, um, what now? <laughs> what lies ahead now that I have this loss? Um, and so giving myself, my mind, some questions that are useful 
has been for me a part of what um, this practice has been about. So these are some examples of some of those questions. Um, what may this loss be making room for? What can I connect with? Um, or excuse me, who can I connect with um, or support who has gone through a similar loss? And what are my feelings about this loss? Where do I feel those feelings in my body? So it was interesting when Will um, and I talked about me doing a talk and he said, um, what would you like to talk about? And I said, well, is there anything that you think might be useful or that you'd like me to talk about? And he gave me two choices, um, loss or joy. What was so interesting about this week's practice of, as it came up, this something that kind of felt not quite right, and then having these practices to go into it and really discover it and sit in it, and then to to mourn the loss of something. On the other side of that, what I realized was it also gave me the opportunity to experience joy. It wasn't just about fully exploring what this loss has been and will be, but it's also a recognition that after that release, there was a feeling of gratitude and joyfulness. Which works out because I am an overachiever and so I thought, oh wow. I can do both in one talk. 